In this A-level IB chemistry video, we're going to be looking at calorimetry. So let's first of all remind ourselves of the equation for calculating enthalpy change. Remember it's represented by delta H, and we can calculate it by taking the energy of the products and taking away the energy of the reactants from it. Now a calorimeter is a device used to measure the heat flow within a reaction. And here I've drawn a really simple calorimeter, which you may have used yourself. So we have a polystyrene cup. Remember, we use polystyrene because it's a good insulator, so it helps prevent heat loss to the surroundings. We have a thermometer that will help us measure the temperature change. The lid, again, helps prevent heat loss by convection currents. And then our reaction mixture will obviously be found within the cup. Now remember that if the temperature goes down during the reaction, we have an endothermic reaction. If the temperature goes up during the reaction, then we have an exothermic reaction. So it's really important that you bear that in mind. Because when we carry out these experiments, we're really trying to work out if they're endothermic or exothermic. Now in order to calculate the enthalpy change, we need to use this equation, which states that heat energy equals mass times specific heat capacity times the temperature change. And we'll look at this equation in a huge amount of detail in a later video. But the point of this experiment is so that we can find out the value for the temperature change over here. That is why we're carrying out this experiment. So let's say we set it up, we place our hydrochloric acid and our sodium hydroxide into the polystyrene cup. We've measured the temperature before and then we wait for the reaction to finish and then we measure the temperature after. And obviously you can take a set of results and your results table might look something like this. So I'm going to write weirdly in my table the temperature before, which will be around 20 degrees, it depends on the temperature of the lab, but that's around room temperature. And then I'm going to say at zero seconds, so that's the moment that the two mixtures are mixed together within the polystyrene cup. So let's say the temperature goes to 25 degrees. Then we'll measure again after 30 seconds. Let's say for argument's sake it's 30 degrees, 60 seconds, 36 degrees, and so on. And so as you can see, we're building up a results table which we'll then be able to plot on a graph. And this is really what this video is about. It's about understanding the graph and how you can actually use it and make it as accurate as possible. So we have our temperature on the y-axis, we have our time in seconds on the x-axis. And then we'll have a really characteristic graph line. So t being zero, so that's before we started our experiment, it is the initial temperature of the reactant, so I'll write that up here. This will be the lowest temperature because this is an exothermic reaction because it's a neutralization reaction. Then start plotting your results. And now I'm drawing the graph line to join the points up. Now to label this graph line further, not going to bother with units because I'm really wanting to point out several aspects. So I've already told you that T0 is the temperature of the reactants. Well, T1 is the highest temperature actually reached within the reaction. And as you can see from the graph line, that is indeed the highest temperature. However, there's a huge amount of heat lost to the surroundings and actually by drawing this graph we're not getting a completely accurate representation of what's going on so we have to try and work out what that highest temperature would have been based on there not being any heat loss to the surroundings so this is the crucial bit here that makes it high level chemistry is we have to extrapolate our graph and so what that means is drawing a straight line from here extrapolating up which will give us the accurate reading of the highest temperature. And so we're going to call that T2, and we're going to describe that as being the temperature that would have been reached if there was no heat loss to the surroundings. It's really important that you can do this extrapolation. So in order to find out that temperature change, which remember we're going to later substitute into this equation up here, that will be another video's content, then we do change in temperature equals simply that highest theoretical temperature reach minus the initial temperature which was actually measured. Notice that the reactants were mixed at this point.
And like I said, the temperature went up in this reaction because it was a neutralization reaction and therefore it was an exothermic reaction.